Welcome to How to Cook That, I'm Anne Reardon and this is an episode of Debunking where we take a look at viral videos from around the internet to see if they are real or fake. This first one was sent in by JJ10. Pouring in batter, baking paper, in the air fryer, ooh pancakes, a whole stack of pancakes all at once. If we rewind back and have a look there, that pattern that's on top of the pancakes, you get that from pouring it into a fry pan and it bubbling up that's not the pattern you'd expect in an air fryer but let's give it a go and see what really happens well it's obvious that that video was fake Despite having baking powder in them, they didn't rise. They've just flattened out under the weight of the ones on top. And the bottom one even has the pattern from the air fryer basket on it. They are edible, but I would not recommend making pancakes using this method. What's next? If you don't want your baked goods to lose their color, bake at 325 Fahrenheit. Normally when you bake a cake in the oven, you want it to go golden brown on top. How many recipes have you seen that say bake until golden brown? But if you have colored cakes, that is going to make that color a lot duller on the top. But if you don't want them to go brown, then I guess we should test out this theory. I'll bake one of these trays at 325 F. And after 18 minutes of baking, they're done through to the middle and they still have their color. Now let's increase the oven temperature to 360F or 180C. And after it's preheated, we'll add that other tray of cupcakes in. These ones of course bake faster because the oven's hotter. And after 14 minutes, they are cooked all the way through. Now, if we look at these side by side, these ones were baked at 325 and these ones at 360 and I can't see a difference in color. The key is not the oven temperature, it's just to pull it out of the oven before they go brown. If you have a larger cake, you might need to put an empty tray on the shelf above just to shield it from that extra heat and stop it going brown. While we're talking about color, Bianca wants to know if this works. Here is how I make my buttercream colors more saturated without any extra dye and only one additional tool. I'm going to add three drops to about a cup of buttercream and mix it. What you usually see is something like this. Now I'm going to take my immersion blender and mix this at high speed. Gel-based food coloring is water-based and when you whip up your buttercream, you're making a stable emulsion of fat and water. The gel has a difficult time moving past all that fat in the butter to reach the water in the meringue and a little bit in the butter. Let's test it out. I have here some Swiss buttercream and I'm going to fold in a little bit of gel food coloring, which gives us a very pale orange. Now, if I use the immersion blender and blend it up, then I do indeed get a darker color. But you may not want to try this hack because it's not working due to the reasons given in the video. It is working because you're just knocking all the air out of the frosting. Before I used the immersion blender, I actually put the frosting into a measuring jug so we could see how much we had. And we've got about 700 mils there. But after blending it, we have substantially less. When you whip air into things, it makes them lighter. Think about creaming the butter and sugar together. It goes from that buttery yellow color to a pale color. If I show you using some American buttercream, with this one, I've used the blender to make it darker. And then I have whipped this one again using an electric mixer. And you can see it goes lighter again once we add the air back into it. So if you want aerated fluffy frosting that's bright in color, you're gonna have to add more food coloring. Sorry about that one. Next, Five Minute Crafts and TikTok continue to promote cooking eggs in the microwave. And just in case you're new to this channel, here's a reminder why you should not cook eggs in the microwave. TikTok hack doing poached eggs in the microwave. Well, this is what's happened to me. I've literally burnt my full face. Eggs can explode when they're cooked 
or reheated in the microwave and that's especially dangerous for poached eggs because it can shoot that hot water all over you. Is it going to happen every time you put an egg in the microwave? No it's not. Can you predict when it is or isn't going to happen? No you can't. Is cooking it in a bowl instead of a cup or putting a hole in the egg yolk going to prevent it from happening? No, it's not. So the best advice is... Don't put eggs in the microwave. That's right. Just don't cook eggs in the microwave. Next, a thousand books says, The comments on this video can't seem to agree what's happening here and frankly, I'm also confused. Let's watch it. Watch to the end to see the greatest fail ever. Oh, that poor lady, she's just got boiling water all over her. Water can explode like that if it is superheated. It is rare, a lot more rare than heating an egg in a microwave, but it can happen. As you know, normally when you heat water, once it gets up to boiling point, it will bubble, it will boil, and the water will change from being water into being steam. But if your water has no impurities in it, like if you're using filtered water or distilled water and you put it in a container that is highly glazed, it has no scratches in it like a glass or a new cup, then it is possible to heat it above boiling point without it boiling. According to my thermometer, this water is at boiling point already, but we can't see any bubbles. Now, if I was to move it or to add anything to it, the water instantly starts bubbling and spurts boiling water everywhere. The FDA has warnings about this on their website and they say if you add some sugar or some coffee granules or something to the water before you heat it, it will greatly reduce the risk of this happening. And while theoretically that is true, I don't want you to think that guarantees your safety. There are stories like Charles who reheated a cup of coffee in the microwave and then when he went to take a sip, it exploded in his face. So just be careful with that one. Next, Dave sent in this one. Pasta inside a blender. Just break it up a little bit. Make sure it all fits in there. We're gonna turn it on. Wow, look at that. Yeah, dump this out on our table. We're making fresh pasta out of pasta. We're going to take an egg. Are you serious? You could have just made pasta out of flour and an egg. What was the point of blending up the pasta? Not to mention that they put a fork in the blender and they could have just used the pasta that they already had. Who cares if it's a different shape than the one they had at the end? I'm really hoping that this was supposed to be a joke. Moving on. I feel like I've been cutting cakes wrong my whole life. Instead of cutting down into a cake, if you cut in from the side, you won't have any of those cake crumbs dragging through the frosting, so you'll have a cleaner slice and you're gonna look like a total baking rock star. Unless you're cutting a cake for food photography, it really doesn't matter if you have a few crumbs in your frosting, so for most people this wouldn't matter, but let's test it out anyway. I'll cut this one the normal way going down, and you can see when I pull it out, that there are indeed crumbs in the frosting and frosting on the cake. And now if I try and cut from the edge in towards the center, it is harder to cut without pushing the cake over. And this is only going to get worse as you've taken more slices out of the cake. But when I pull this one out, it is a much cleaner looking slice. Apart from the chocolate drip that has been dragged in as we went across the cake, we've also dragged this whole swirl and kind of ruined that on top there. But overall, this is not a bad hack if you're just trying to cut one slice for food photography and you don't have any decorations piped on top of your cake. All right, time for one more. This one was sent in by Rhiannon. Don't throw the lemon seed after eating. Pick it and put it into the eggshell. Then plant it in the flower pot of uncle's house quietly. After a period of time, you will have delicious apple juice. Three, put a handful of fresh mung beans in bottle. Pour a little water on it, cover it with gauze, and let it stand for a while. Then you will have delicious potatoes to eat. <laughs> what can I say to that, really? It looked like stolen footage with AI auto-generated spoken words over the top. It was complete rubbish. To think that the internet was originally developed so that researchers at different universities could communicate and collaborate on important information with each other. Look how far we've come. 
seriously. If you find anything you want me to debunk, send it to me on the email listed below this video. With thanks to my amazing patrons for all your support. Make it a great week by being kind to others and I'll see you on Friday.